What makes a story a story? Hey, creators, I'm about to let you in on a secret. It's the secret of how every story you've ever loved actually works. Ready? Okay, imagine you're watching a video clip of an adorable baby fox named Rascal playing with his favorite toy, an equally adorable stuffed unicorn named Trixie. Go ahead and say it with me. Aww. But see, then the video ends, and chances are it won't really stick with you or motivate you to take any kind of action. Why? Well, because it doesn't tell a powerful enough story. At the beginning, Rascal is cute. In the middle, Rascal is cute. And at the end, yeah, you guessed it, Rascal, still cute. There's no tension. And without tension, there's no transformation. And without transformation, there's no story. But what if we were to rewind to the real beginning of Rascal's story? Because see, this isn't actually a story about Rascal. It's a story about a kid named AJ who desperately wants a pet. But after the untimely death of the family goldfish, AJ's folks aren't so sure AJ is ready for that kind of responsibility. But then one day, AJ's walking in the woods and he hears a strange whimpering sound. AJ finds a tiny little fur ball covered in fleas and shivering at the base of a tree. After determining that this little fox kit is indeed alone in the world, AJ brings Rascal home, gives him a bath, and tries to feed him from a bottle. But Rascal refuses to drink. He's never seen a bottle before, and he's totally freaked out by this whole situation. AJ starts to cry. If Rascal doesn't eat, he won't survive. And if another animal dies on AJ's watch, then poof goes the dream of pet ownership. But then, AJ gets an idea. Trixie. Trixie always calms me down when I'm upset, thinks AJ. Maybe she'll calm Rascal down too. Sure enough, though Rascal is wary at first, he soon snuggles up to Trixie and eventually feels comfortable enough to drink from the bottle. Having heard that backstory, when you see Rascal happily frolicking in AJ's yard, carrying Trixie in his mouth, you can feel everything that AJ is probably feeling. Relief, pride, satisfaction, and of course, love. After watching Rascal's transformation from barely surviving to healthy and thriving, you might feel inspired to go play with your own pet or even volunteer at a shelter or foster a rescue animal yourself. And that, my friends, is the power of a story. Now, why does that story work? Because it does three things effectively. It hooks you in and makes you care about the main character or the hero. It creates tension and it relieves that tension. That's it. That's all every good story in the history of the world actually does. Now, to understand how AJ's story does that, we need to break it down into plot points. A plot point is just something that happens to either create tension for the audience or relieve it. First, we have the dream. The hero of our story, AJ, dreams of owning a pet. But at the beginning, that dream feels very far away. Then, a conflict is introduced. AJ discovers Rascal in the woods on the brink of death, which sets off AJ's quest to revive him. But there's a complication. The tension rises when AJ encounters a significant obstacle. Rascal won't drink from the bottle. Our hero despairs and hits rock bottom. Then, at last, the tension is resolved when AJ digs deep, comes up with a solution, and saves the day. At the end, both AJ and Rascal are changed for the better and AJ's dream of pet ownership has become a heartwarming reality. If this sounds familiar, that's because it's the same basic story structure used in pretty much every fairy tale, video game, and adventure story you can think of, from Cinderella to Star Wars. It's called The Hero's Journey, and now you're going to create your own hero's journey, so your final presentation will be just as effective and engaging as all those other stories you know and love. Let's start by looking back at your big idea. Ask yourself, who's the hero? Remember, the hero is usually the character who changes the most from the beginning of a story to the end. 
That could be someone you learned about, it could be one of your experts, or it could be you. Just by going through the process of figuring out what topic you wanted to pursue, your dream, going on a quest to learn more about it, overcoming obstacles like reaching out to scary experts, and gaining the necessary skills to present it, you've become the hero of your own story. Next, identify the major obstacles your hero had to overcome in order to complete their quest. This provides the tension every good story needs to suck the audience in and make them want to stick around until that tension gets resolved. Ramp up that tension until it reaches a breaking point. This is the climax or rock bottom moment when things are at their absolute worst and all hope seems lost for the hero. Finally, resolve the tension by showing the audience how your hero was able to dig deep, find solutions, and ultimately triumph over that obstacle. That creates the emotional lift you want your audience to walk away with. Once you've identified those five plot points, you'll have everything you need to create a storyboard for your presentation. A storyboard is like a super simplified comic book that maps out the major plot points of your presentation, so it's easy to turn it into compelling content. You can fill out as many storyboard panels as you like to flesh out your vision, but at a bare minimum, you should include those five major plot points. Number one, the dream. Who is your hero and what do they want? Number two, the conflict. What creates the tension that sets them off on their quest? Three, the complication. What obstacle stands in their way? Four, the climax. When do they hit rock bottom? And five, the resolution. How do they triumph over the obstacle and emerge victorious? Once those elements are in place, the rest is just connective tissue. All right, enough telling. Let's get to showing. Let's go make some storyboards. We want 